Welcome to Broadway Comedy Club Radio. I'm your host, Clayton Fletcher, here in New York City, joined, as always, by the legendary booker and owner of Broadway Comedy Club itself. He also owns Greenwich Village Comedy Club, neither of which is up and running at the moment due to the ongoing pandemic. <laughs> but he's also the author of the great new book. It's called Did It on a Dare. Al Martin. Al, how you been, buddy? Thank you, Clayton, again. Uh, awesome, awesome uh, to be here and excited that we've got everything uh, back online because obviously, as you mentioned, I have a lot of time on my hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. How's winter in Florida treating you? Uh, let me tell you something. If you got to be wintering somewhere, this is the place to be. 70, uh, but it, what's very funny is the way people in, ha in Florida handle 60 degree weather you know they're out here in the morning in parkers and uh <laughs> gloves you would think you were in alaska these people can't handle 60 degree weather it's it's unbelievable yeah well it's all relative you know uh what we think is cold the uh, penguins would laugh at us right so it's oh my <laughs> god they're, they're they're in panic mode you got to see the weather forecast uh uh uh, time to bring out the winter gear, folks. We're going to be 65 degrees. <laughs> Man, I would kill for 65 right now. Yeah, exactly. A, a cold winter. Well, Al, exactly. we have a special guest this week, and let's just say he is uh, someone who's near and dear to your heart. Is that accurate, do you think? Uh, let me tell you, talk about special. This man operates probably uh, one of the most successful restaurants in New York City. It's a legendary restaurant. Three generations now of, of his family have operated this. Um, and uh, I'd love to welcome our guest, uh, Sal Scognamillo, if I'm not butchering the last name too much, uh, is our perfect. guest. <laughs> you said it perfect. Thank you so much for that introduction. I really appreciate that. Well, yeah, let me also mention the name. It's not Sal's place, so it's Patsy's. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. And may I say the one and only Patsy's, because there's been a lot of nonsense about that too, right? Long story, there's other places with similar names, but ours is the only one, Patsy's Italian Restaurant, we're on 56 between 8th and Broadway. Going on our 77th year now, God bless, and uh, believe it or not, my son joined, so now we're on the fourth generation. Of, yeah, uh, now I think Scott I met your son the last the time I was there, uh, because I believe it was so. the, yes. the last time I was there, Sal, it was heartbreaking to me, because yeah. I can remember so many times being at the restaurant, packed on the first floor, packed on the second floor. And I came to the restaurant uh, to support during the pandemic. Um, and it was, what they did is just sad. It's like, you did the best you could, of course, under the circumstances, but it was like three tables outside. Your son, I think, was our waiter. Yeah. And, you know, it was just sad to see. It is. It's very unfortunate. And as I always say, most importantly is, is you know, saving human lives. But at, at this point, it's frustrating because the um, the numbers don't uh, don't say that uh, it's coming from the restaurants. In New York, the uh, no numbers that were given out, 74% is the living room spread. And 1.4% of new cases is from restaurants and bars. And, you know, I hate to even say this, but if you separate bars out of that, it's one half of 1% that's coming from restaurants. Now, remember, and a lot of people don't realize this outside of New York City, I'm still getting phone calls and, and emails for reservations for indoor dining. They don't realize that we're not open because the rest of New York State is open for indoor dining. And what's a little more frustrating to add to that is that the numbers in Manhattan, not just New York City, but if you just take the borough of Manhattan where we are, are uh, the lowest that they've been in New York State since June or July. They're always lower than the surrounding areas. I myself live on Long Island. And, and thank God I'm happy. The restaurants out here are booming. They're doing great business. But it's frustrating because there's no good reason to keep the ones in Manhattan closed. But it is what it is. And, you know, we got to get through it as long as we're healthy. Thank God that's the most important thing. My parents, God bless them. My wife's mother, they stay home as much as they can. And we're trying to do it. And I know I feel very, very big uh, empathy for you and your business. It's, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's a I, nightmare. we like, never got to reopen. You know? and, just... and again, I mean, they're paying people $150 to sit and watch Saturday Night Live, but they can't go to a comedy show. I don't understand. 
it's it's you know and what's amazing is on top of all of that um you know we 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 have the situation where we kind of thought we might open in what was it phase five was phase, phase four who knows right yes. and that right that would be right after restaurants so figuring a couple of weeks in between each phase we were hoping to be open in uh, August of this past year. Yes. And what and what was amazing, Sal, was I try to always think ahead, as I'm sure you do as well. So I didn't want to be told by the state, okay, you're opening this date, and then there are 500 nightclubs or restaurants or whatever trying to get plexiglass, trying to get masks, trying to get hand sanitizers. So I ordered all of this stuff in advance, try, you know, signage this way to the bathroom where people can't read six feet apart, you yeah. know, and, and I got all of this, spent a decent amount of money for two venues. And then the next thing I'm told is, uh, oh, you're closed indefinitely. We don't have any, not even saying to me, yeah. <laughs> these are the met yeah, right. Not even saying these are the metrics you got to meet. This is what you got to do. You're closed indefinitely. Very so frustrating. very frustrating. And, and to me, very unfair. And again, I will reiterate, most important thing is people being healthy. But with that said, if these other things are allowed to go through, they should be. Now, we got reopened finally for indoor dining September 30th. And we had that till like, I think, December 10th. So it was less than, you know, it was less than a, a couple of months. We had the outdoor dining, which thank you again for supporting us there. Starting, I think it was started in June, but we didn't start till the end of July. And it's it's really crazy to look at that. And then again, to compare to what else is going on around there. I was ready to rehire my whole staff. Like you said, phase one, two, three. We were, I think, in phase three originally. We were ready right. to rehire our staff July 6th. And then you saw the same thing happen with that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. But, again, people have to be safe, have to be healthy. But give us a reason. I'll give you an example. We got closed for New York City indoor dining. I think it was around December 10th or 12th. I don't remember, to be honest with you. And um, the same time, Pennsylvania did it. They closed indoor dining as well. But Pennsylvania had a reopening date of January 4th, which they did. They reopened January 4th. We indefinite. We still don't have anything, like you're saying. The metrics are there. There's no reason anymore. It, it really is just, uh, it, 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 and you, you cited the statistic that I always refer to, that 1.45% spread yes. from restaurants. Well, if that's, if you like always talking about going by the science, right? Thank you. Thank you. The science is right there, 1.45% in restaurants. Why? Are you, and, and then after all of this, he comes out, the governor, and says, well, you know, we have to reopen uh, and think of a safe way to reopen our economy because there's not going to be anything to reopen to. What, did you just wake up from a coma? <laughs> it's very fr very frustrating, Sid. I do empathize with all the, th the leaders. They have a tough time dealing with, you know, human, human life versus commerce. But again, the numbers are the ones that make sense. And th that's something that's not objective. You, you got the numbers. This is what it is. You should go by it all the time. So it is what it is, but we're, we're looking forward. We're trying to do the best we can. What we've done uh, throughout the pandemic, and I have to tell you, Al, someone like you, I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart how much it means that you come and support us. And we've had so many people like you that when we were open, they did that. We also sell our, our cookbooks we sell our pasta sauce all over the country, you know, whether you get it mail order or in supermarkets, people have been buying gift certificates left and right. And that really especially touches me at my heart because some people, you know, say, well, why would I buy a gift certificate? What if they're not going to reopen? You know, then they, they lose the money. And in the holiday season, we sold a lot of gift baskets. We put together the Patsy sauce. I don't know if you can see back here. We have the sauce. We put the cookbooks. In I it. love that sauce. Thank you can't you. get that sauce anywhere in Florida, that's for sure. The only thing you could do is is, is uh, go on the website, we ship it to you, which is patsies.com without the apostrophe. But, you know, we really are, um, you know, my wife has such a great saying. She says, Sal, we have to change the conversation. And that's really what it is. We've got to change the conversation about this because we're still, we could bang our head against the wall a million times trying to figure out why they're not doing this. We have to try and do other things. One of the, uh, one of the other things on the horizon 
for us is we're looking to open an, another location. It'll be called a pop-up, you know, like a pop-up restaurant for a limited amount of time right. in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Oh, so my God. That's awesome. Very excited about it. It's a beautiful hotel out there. We're teaming with some wonderful people. And uh, I will put an announcement on my Facebook page and, and our website soon. Now, and, Sal, when you say pop-up, well, is there any possibility it will remain permanent or it will be evaluate and see? Well, it is the, the second thing, evaluate and see. But the hope and the feeling around is that it, it could become a permanent thing. And they actually, I don't know what part of Florida you in. Uh, Pompano Beach. Okay, well, they were talking about maybe, maybe possibility, but this is all talk, uh, Boca Raton. Papa. Oh, please. That's yeah. 15 <laughs> minutes from me. Not far. Yeah. I'd yeah. be there every night. So, I mean, but it is one thing at a time, and uh, it's more along, along the lines of uh, see how it goes. But the hope and, uh, and, uh, and thought is that we, we, we should be able to do good. But, oh, you know, you'd have your number one supporter down here if you opened a Boca Raton. <laughs> I'm literally 15 minutes from Boca Raton, so. I know, I know, I know you would be <laughs> but, Right uh, now, I hit Gianni's in Pompano Beach. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it down here, but. I've never you know. been, I've heard good things about it. You know, like everyone else, I'm sure you do. I wish very uh, good things to all the restaurants and the comedy clubs and everything. These are the, especially in Manhattan, this is the fabric of what makes New York, New York. And Manhattan, not even New York City, Manhattan is the capital of the world in some respects. So some respects. So it really is, is, again, I don't know why they want to do this. You had 65 million visitors. I saw an article at Carmine's Restaurant in Times Square. They owe so much money in back rent. They don't know if they can go forward or not. I mean... And this is a restaurant, for those that don't know, uh, on a theater night, you could wait three hours to sit down. You might miss the first act of a show waiting to get yeah. sat down over there. Well, there on 44th Street is a great location. We're on 56th, and it was always, like you said, we'd get the, the pre-theater seating, which would be about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. They'd be done about 7, 30, go to the show. We'd change over the tables and get another seating so it's it's, it's very well we're only two blocks uh three blocks we're on 53rd and 8th and yeah. i can't tell you through the years how many customers i've had come in and i you know i'll talk to them on the line outside waiting to come in just to make them forget how long they're waiting you know <laughs> <laughs> and then and then they'll turn around i'll say to them well have you visited any restaurants and uh in the city and um you know, I'll say there's a great Italian restaurant uh, three blocks away, um, um, Patsy's, and uh, they'll go. Uh, you won't be you'll be amazed how many people say either they were there right before the show uh, and went to dinner, or that they have been there on their stay in New York. And Al's not kidding, by the way, Sal. He really does that. Uh, we actually used to have a segment on this podcast. Uh, we used to call it uh, crowd work with Al Martin because you know there'd be a long line of people of a huge crowd outside waiting to get into Broadway Comedy Club and like one way that Al would kind of uh you know make that easier for people he would interview them and then we would use that footage on the podcast a lot of times some of the answers he got to some of his uh you know probing questions were pretty funny but yeah I mean I can vouch for the fact that I've actually literally witnessed Al telling people if they ask him you know, what's a good place to eat around here? I mean, honestly, Sal, I'll be honest. I think when Al was scouting locations for his new comedy club before he owned Broadway Comedy Club, he's like, I want a place <laughs> near Patsy's. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, you are so kind. And I, again, I can't thank you uh, for those kind words and what you do because that's what keeps us in business. Advertising is great. Being on these shows are great. But when a word of mouth friend tells you where to go, and, and it's, so, it's so heartwarming to me that, and again, the... the messages on facebook the people been emailing me texting me we can't wait to come back you'll be the first stop when we get to travel to new york and everything i just i just hope that you know it's safe of course for everyone and it's soon because this is much longer i mean remember when this started we were told we were going to be closed for two weeks that's what i know I, and uh i'm i'm optimistic sal for 2021 hopefully this vaccine takes hold Yes. And, and and that's a big positive. Uh, there's a new round of uh, help uh, financially. Yes. But, you know, I don't know if you're in the same situation as I am. You know, you also, you you mentioned you have kids in the business and stuff, uh, or your son is now in the business. But it's like, at this point in my career, um, I'm obviously much closer to the end of my uh, career than to the beginning. 
And the only reason I'm fighting so hard, I could retire if I wanted to, but the reason I'm fighting hard is for my kids, you know, that exactly. I exactly. remember how hard it was for me starting out in business, you know, and, 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 the, and, and I'm trying to do this for them to avoid to have to go through that and work for somebody. Exactly. And, um, you know, that's what I'm fighting for. Well, sure. So if our son wasn't interested, I don't know where I would be with this. But um, and also for, you know, for us, and I'm sure it's for you as well. You know, it, it broke our heart to have to let go of our employees. I've, I've got one my, my longest running employee has been with me since 1977. I mean, I was a kid. You started working there. I, you know, I was, I was still in high school. And, uh, and, you know, even with this Asbury Park, I'm bringing one of my longstanding uh, workers. I'm going to try and bring him with me to see what we can do. Because now, you have an affinity for the, for the Jersey Shore because you had another Patsy's at one time. Yes. In the Atlantic City and the Hilton. We had a great success with Atlantic City Hilton uh, Patsy's Restaurant. So I was there, I think, from... 2008, I believe, until about 2013. Unfortunately, the hotel was sold. It was, I think it was purchased by Caesars, and they bought the hotel with the express purpose just to close it. It was cheaper to buy the hotel and close it than do competition. So we, we didn't get closed because it wasn't busy. We got closed because they just bought the hotel and closed it. Yeah, back. I think at the time, the, the deal, there was a deal that Caesar, uh, Caesars bought it, I think, with another entity. And that Caesars would get the mailing list. And Tropicana, you know? Tropicana got the equipment, I think. Yeah, Tropicana got the equipment and Caesars got right. the mailing list. And they both, uh, I don't know. I, they then they talked about a water park and all such nonsense that never got really. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Atlantic City, I love it, but they, they really need to build it up. This Asbury Park, they seem to be really building it up, too. I'm a huge fan of Asbury Park, Sal. I think it's a real up-and-coming area. We actually have some friends friends of mine who uh who moved out there recently and they they really like it you know uh it's a beach town got yeah. a lot of culture there a lot of good places to eat really nice little boardwalk kind of everything you expect from a a jersey shore town uh pretty progressive kind of you know politically yeah. you know it, which a lot of the towns down there are are, are less so so yeah, yeah it's uh it's excellent it, it, we've been there quite a few times now visiting and it's really such a wonderful, beautiful area, and we're real excited about it. It's uh, it's funny how much how many times you mentioned to someone and like, oh my god, that's great. And talk about culture, the uh, the Paramount Theater is down there. Yeah, I have a friend of mine who introduced us to the idea of it, and he does all the old fashioned jazz, uh, you know, uh, uh, jazz bands and 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 all types of shows, and you know, there's some comedy shows in there too as well. But I hope to get that that, that they get that theater going again, which again would be. You know, like 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 Al was saying, the people would come to our restaurant and then go to a comedy show, come to our restaurant, go to a, a theater. Maybe they go to the theater and come to the place in Asbury, which is nice. It's a late night drink or something. Uh, or, well, now you got to yeah. be alive by 10 o'clock because that's when the virus comes out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you know, you, you said a funny thing before that it, it immediately triggered me when you said you live out in Long Island. Um you know, I went to dinner one night out in Breakneck to Peter Luger because that was the one that was open for indoor. And because it was in Nassau County, it was allowed to be open for indoor dining. Yeah. Now, where the GPS let me off uh, to get out there was in Bayside, Queens. So I'm driving through Bayside, Queens on a lightly raining night and you see all these outdoor re restaurants with outdoor structures in yeah. in Bayside and in Little Neck, you know, and people scurrying out of the out of the out of the street to go run back somewhere so they don't get drenched with rain. And literally two blocks later I'm in Great Neck where everything is indoors. So yeah. I I don't understand the thinking. How do you have indoor dining in Great Neck and then two blocks to the west it's not permitted. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm fond of this expression. My son says is that it, it's less painful for me to put my head through the wall than to try and figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, it's so ridiculous. There's no rhyme or reason. And as Al, you mentioned before, the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. And literally across the street, I think there is one restaurant that had originally brought a lawsuit 
that's in Little Neck and literally across the street, people are allowed to eat and they're not allowed to eat there. And again, if it was the whole state, which I don't want it to be, I want everyone to make a living. If it was the whole state then you say, all right, fine, we're doing it for a reason. We're helping people saving lives. And again, it's, it's all about saving lives. That's the most important thing. But why? Why? Across the street, it's okay. And, and then, you know, like I make another joke where you say, is that when you walk in a restaurant and you sit down, let's say it's indoor dining, you, you have, you can take your mask off when you're sitting down. So it's like, uh, here's, I'm, st I'm going to stand up. I don't know. I'm standing up in my chair now. <laughs> Make sure you have your pants on. It's Zoom. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. So it's, uh, so this is, this is, you can, this here, you, uh, you know, you, you can, you can get COVID and now right. anti-COVID shield activated. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And again, I'm, I'm, I'm not making light of it. It's a serious disease. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I lost a family member last week. And um, she was too young. I lost a family. My, 57, my cousin. And I'm not making light of it. What I'm saying is it's arbitrary. Why is it okay here? It's not okay there. It's very arbitrary. And Manhattan, I never thought in my life that something like this would happen. Okay, it closed for a few weeks, a few months, whatever. Let's get yeah, I mean, nine one one. We closed a couple of weeks. You know, uh, uh, the Great Recession. Everybody was nervous. Lost a lot of Wall Streeters who spend money and you know rack up the Amex bill. But um, yeah. who would have ever? I would have never dreamed in a million years that I'd be closed. I don't see us opening until uh, April, May. You know, so I would. I would be happy if it was April, May for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Being optimistic at the rate the vaccine is being given out, uh, yeah. you know, uh, who knows? But um, the other thing that I think about is, and again, this is firsthand knowledge. When I was in Manhattan, when we were open the outdoor and then the indoor dining, I have to tell you, ninety-nine percent of the people were, were adhering, wearing masks. Being careful, washing their hands, doing what they got to do. Out here, where I live in Nassau County, in Long Island, and that's open, not as many people comply. I'll just say it that simply. It's just not as many people. Manhattan, they are following the rules. And that's what every, the governor told us. All government said, follow the rules and we can help control this thing. And we did, but we still didn't get there. You know, I almost liken it to... Like when you were a kid in class in second grade and the teacher was writing on a blackboard and someone said something out loud. She turns around, who said that? And if you don't tell me who said that, the whole class is going to detention, you know? Right. Well, why are the people that are following the rules? I, I remember you said something earlier in the conversation. When this pandemic first started in March, two weeks later, I spoke to my HVAC person for my uh, air conditioning and heating system. He suggested ordering now, while you can get it, it's a special air filtration system. It's called active air filtration. It actually, it's what they use in the hospitals. It puts positive and negative protons into the air and kills the virus. Plus, you know what else kills the virus? Humidity. If you were just to install humidifiers in all places, comedy clubs, restaurants, theaters, Humidity is definitely something that helps bring down the virus. It's heavy. It can't travel as much. So we installed all this stuff. I ordered it in March. I didn't get it till August. So I was happy I got this. It cost me about $8,000. I put it in both upstairs and downstairs. And when people are indoors, flip on a switch. And look, I, I, people ask me, it's my family working there. I'm worried about them too. Don't you think I'm going to do everything to protect my family? Of course. Of and of course. course, my customers, you know. So again, it's it's... It's a level of frustration, but this, you know, you can do what you can do, and there's certain things you can't do, unfortunately. It, 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 uh, just changing gears real quick. Um, you know, I understand, like, I have a comedy club owner here and a restaurant owner here, and uh, obviously you guys are, are frustrated with the way the government has uh, handled this whole pandemic and everything, but I, I want to change gears and, and just, you know, bring up a different subject because, you know, you mentioned four generations – Yes. in the restaurant business, owning a restaurant in New York City over the course of four generations. I mean, there aren't, there aren't that many of, of you guys left. You know, a lot of the old classic restaurants are gone and, you know, replaced by a CVS or a Bank of America <laughs> or a Starbucks. Starbucks was the next one. Yeah. Yeah. And the city is really changing in that way. Um, you know, so putting the pandemic aside and, and the coronavirus stuff aside, 
What is the secret to staying open for so long? Is it your great great grandmother's pasta recipe, or or is it something else that has kept you guys uh, thriving through all of these decades? Yes, you know it's a great question, and I get asked uh, quite often about that. And I think the most important, there's several aspects to it. The most important thing is that um, the family is there. We're always there, and that gives you the level of consistency. And the thing that I think is equal importance is. We don't try and be something we're not. We're a Southern Italian Neapolitan red sauce restaurant. Not one day a Tuscan trattoria, one day a Sicilian. All good food, <coughs> excuse me, but we try and stick to our roots. I buy my supplies from some of the same supplies my grandfather bought from. He was wow. the first chef, his name was Patsy, Pasquale, but they call him Patsy. Yeah. My father, myself, only three chefs all these years. We've been buying the same mozzarella ricotta cheese for 77 years. We've been the long, this is not a good one, but the longest continuous user of Muzak. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that they have, right? Wow, <laughs> Muzak still around. Never <laughs> change the Muzak, Sal. Whatever you do, do not get rid of the uh, Muzak. Well, that, that elevated music works, you know, but <laughs> it must be subliminal or something. But, and, and I think that's what it is the family. It's the consistency. It's the level of uh, that there's only three chefs there. But again, trying to, to, to always remain who you are. And I think that's for a restaurant, for a person, relationship. Don't try and be something you're not. And I think that really helps us a lot. Um, for our 50th anniversary is when we came out with the sauce. We started selling that in the supermarkets. And, you know, and then I came out with the first cookbook in 2002, the second one, 2015. The 75th anniversary, we did the wine. The Patsy's wine, which Beautiful. is a great thing. You know, that's always fun to drink wine, right? And uh, it's just trying to keep the consistency. And now, I was never forced, and this is another important aspect to answer your question fully. I was never forced to be in this business. I was uh, television and film production for college. That's what I took. And I worked as Thank a cameraman. Thank God you got into the business. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happened, Al. I worked as a cameraman for uh, about six months, and then I couldn't get a job. And my father asked me, would you like to learn how to cook? I said, okay, why not? And that was in uh, January of 1985. And I loved it. I loved it ever since. And we have two, God blessed us with two sons. Our oldest son is in the business. He, since he could talk, this is all he wanted to do. We have a younger son who about three years ago came to me and my wife. He was almost in tears saying, what? I said, what is it? What's the matter? He says, I don't know if I want to work at the restaurant. I said, you know what? <laughs> I want you to be happy. If you don't want to work here, please do what you got to do. And he's just started a PhD program for psychology at Fordham University, virtually, of course, now with the way things are going. And he loves it. He loves helping people. And that's his thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, what do you want for your children? You want them to be happy. That's, you know, want them to be happy. And you know what? Sometimes as, as, as good as our businesses uh, have been to us, you know, um, I, one of the things that makes me sad is, looking at the anti-business attitude of the city government. And I say, do I want this for my kids? You know, we have neighbors who stand outside with cameras to take pictures of our line outside to send it to the community board. This is a line that, let's say there's a nine o'clock show, the line might form from 8.40 to nine o'clock, one day a week, you know? I mean, and, and people... It's, it's hard. You're dealing with inspectors, health department, building department. You know the drill. I mean, it's, it, it, makes, it makes it more difficult. But, you know, the, the thing is you have to decide if it's worth it for you and it's worth it for your children. And for me, it is for the legacy alone. But, of course, the fact that my son wants to continue. And it really is it's something that at the end of the day, I know you feel this way out. Uh, the most important thing is for me, for me to make people happy. I mean, you, you make them laugh which is great, music, food. I mean, that's, that's wonderful stuff. And we're so blessed that we have the opportunity to make people happy with what we do. Yeah, I mean, you know, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite part of owning a comedy club? And it, there's always only one answer for me. And that's when I'm at the exit as people are leaving. you got a couple of hundred people leaving uh, after a show and you ask them, did you enjoy yourselves? And, you know, they go, you know, I really needed this laugh. I, I've had the hard time or, you know, you see people working a 40, 50, 60 hour week. They just have that one night to go out and they tell you how much they enjoyed it. You know, uh, 
It's priceless. That's the priceless part. It's that's such a wonderful feeling. We we really are blessed that we have that. And and you know we'll get back to it. It'll take some time. Uh, sadly, a lot of our neighbors won't be there, but uh, we we're, we're going to try our best to to be there. And uh, I think we'll get back to that. And I think it'll come back stronger, and people will be more happy and more appreciative than ever. I mean, people are social creatures. They need to to get out. I mean, that's for sure. Hard, one of the hardest, right, Clayton? One of the hardest things for my my parents. And God bless them, 88, 89 years old, is to be cooped up all the time. You can't go anywhere. It's too dangerous. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, they go, they drive by the church. They say their prayers outside. I mean, they they go to, uh, you know, doctor's appointments. (laughs) But you're out of the house, at least, to change the scenery. I mean, the, 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 um, the psychological effect on this is tough. And we got to get back so that people can socialize and, and hug and kiss again and, and be happy. I mean, you know, food, uh, food is great. Laughter is great. Music is fun. I mean, these are things that really make our life worth living sometimes. I mean, obviously, your family is what you live for, but you need that break. You need that and break. And these are traditional. Yeah, absolutely, Sal. And these are, these are traditional Italian values, okay? My grandmother is <laughs> from Sicily. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, th- this is all so familiar to me. Like, people need to hug and kiss, eat, have music, wine, food. Like, this is kind of what, you know, it's being a, great- a guy named Sal is all about. Italian <laughs> <laughs> tradition. And, you know, uh, my grandparents, they started in 1944 during World War II. Talk about tough times. Mm. Wow. And their first customers were the people from Broadway, the musicians. That was their first custom. My grandfather was not a professional musician, but he played piano and he played the uh, mandolin he loved to do. And it was, it's such a, 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 you know, you talk about therapy. There's therapy. I told my son, <laughs> you can do food. You know, he's studying psychology. I says, you could do food therapy maybe for people. <laughs> you know, like that. I mean, you, you know, know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, no, I say, I guess, you know, when, when I get nervous, sometimes I eat. It makes me feel better. <laughs> That's why I look like this, you know. You can tell I've been nervous a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. It's all good. Thank God. Well, well you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned that you're contemplating in Boca Raton. You know, every day I always get people who call me up and say, you know, especially now realtors. Oh, you, we've got this great new space open. We got this new great space open. And, you know, one of the things you got to contemplate nowadays, which we might not have had to contemplate a few years ago, is where you open, how friendly to business is that area going to be? You know, like when people send me this stuff about New York, I say, I love New York. I'm born in New York. I'm raised in New York. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I want to do business in New York. You know, why would I go through all of this again with a third location or something? So uh, I say, it's true. Just, um, you know, now, especially in our business, what you're going to look for is outdoor space as well. And Florida could do that most of the year and have the outdoor space. Absolutely. I've been eating a lot outdoors, you know, especially in December and January when it's not too humid. Uh, February, March, you know, there's four or five months of weather down here that is not humid, but definitely good for outdoor dining. And that that's the big edge. That's a huge edge. I mean, there's, there's a place here on Long Island, not far from me. They built a beautiful outdoor space and it's, it's bigger than the restaurant inside. So the outdoor space is even bigger. And, you know, you talk about that. I don't mean to harp on negative stuff, but the, the regulations in New York, uh, just to build, you saw we had three or four tables outside on the street there. Oh, There's yeah, I can only imagine. 18 pages of regulations for that, <laughs> okay? 18 pages. Now, the same spot on Long Island that I mentioned, they don't have to do half the stuff. I mean, it could be completely enclosed, which when you think about it, it's just psychologically, you're outside, but you're not outside. You're enclosed. But it's allowed there. To, you know, they're allowed to do that. And like you say, it's more friendly to business. I know Florida is friendly to business, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I had opportunities to rent rooftops uh, to do comedy. There was one or two clubs in New York doing it. But to be honest with you, I started calculating, well, how many seats am I going to get up there? How much rent do they want? Um, What do I have to do business-wise to make it work? And at the end of the day... How about insurance? Yeah, yeah, insurance. Someone gets one or two drinks and they fall off of a roof. I I mean, you know... And then the cost of setting up the roof, you know, you got to 
you got to put some kind of flooring and heaters and run electric to the heaters. And then you know the city's going to have regulations on what kind of heaters and forget it. And, and one, one department, whether it's the fire department or the department of buildings, they don't match the same thing. One will tell you one thing, one will tell you the other thing. Well, I'll tell you a great story. I have a, a, at the Broadway Comedy Club an emergency exit that we have uh, by order of the fire department, they told us don't put that little flap on the bottom because we never want a situation where the door just, when someone pushes the crash bar, it opens all the way. We want them to be able to get out. Yeah. So I had to leave no rubber thing on the bottom. Health department comes in one yeah, day. And and says, you're not allowed to do that because then the mice will get in. <laughs> then the mice can get in from next door or the construction site. <laughs> so you've got to put a bottom. So then I say to the health department, I had a bottom on here. Look at the screws where they were. The fire department told me to take it off. They go, that's not our problem. The fire department has their regular. <laughs> well, who am I what do I do here? <laughs> the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. <laughs> that's basically. Okay. Remember what I said. Remember what I said. You put your head through the wall. It's less painful. <laughs> yeah. Let me, tell you, let me tell you one funny story about that. I had one time I got a violation from the health department that my milk was too fresh. <laughs> no, let me explain to you. In New York City, in New York City, and I don't know if it changed, this was about seven, eight years ago, you can have milk out 14 days from the date that they looked at it. It could be up to 14 days until it's expired. Mine was 17 days. And I said, okay, but I got this milk from upstate New York from a farm. It's not from New York City. So that's why the date was for I still had to put bleach in it and throw it out. <laughs> That's in front of the inspector. But it is what it is. You know, I, I really like, you know, I know it's hard and it's difficult, but I really like at the end of the day that we're able to make people happy. And, and, and the fact that, I mean, I can't put into words to you what it means to me when someone says, you know, we come to New York once a year, twice a year, whatever. Our first stop is Patsy's Italian restaurant on West 56th Street. It's so heartwarming. People ask me, I think you'll get a kick out of this, Clayton. What is your favorite best compliment you ever got? And, uh, you know, you try and think of so many different things, but the one that always sticks out in my head was this gentleman that had been coming there for 40 years with his family. And he came, he was, he was at the front door, he was about to sit down. I says, oh, welcome. It's nice to have you back. I hope you enjoy your dinner tonight. He stopped, he looked at me in the face and he went like this, he says, Sal, I know what the food's going to taste like before I sit down. That's why I come back all these years. So Consistency, that's right? That's a great compliment, yeah. Yeah, well, I miss going there. I miss going there with Al. We used to go there after the show uh, some we nights. Missed, and, we missed all of our customers so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sal, so, well, what is your favorite dish at Patsy's? Your favorite dish? I'm always going to default to pasta, and I like pasta with cheese, so I would go with, like, a baked rigatoni sorrentino. That's a rigatoni uh, pasta, tomato basil, rigotta, melted mozzarella parmesan on top. Can't go wrong with that. If I'm I love that. that People don't don't realize that's a tomato sauce we make with onions, marinara we make with garlic. So that's my favorite onion based uh, uh, pasta, and then my favorite garlic based garlic based pasta would be like a linguine with red clam sauce. Wow! Uh, so yeah. fish, fish, fish my fish. favorite dish that you made that I know I can't seem to ever see anywhere. Thank God, because it keeps me coming <laughs> back to you. Is the stuffed calamar. That's very, very popular. You know, it's funny. We were talking about that, and uh, I'm going to put it on the menu. God willing, if we open Asbury Park. Because it is. No one makes it anymore. You got the fried calamari. You got the, you know, saute calamari. But the stuffed calamari, nobody, you don't see it that often. It's a traditional Neapolitan, Southern Italian dish for Christmas Eve, you know, when we have the Feast of the Seven Fishes. And that, that covers at least five fishes in one. <laughs> it sure does. Yeah. <laughs> it's stuffed with the, you know, lobster and crab meat and shrimp and calamari. So you got, you know, half the stuff is done there. And, you know, we put the raisin pinoli as a real Neapolitan thing like that. Absolutely. The spaghetti meatballs, extremely popular. Uh, we're also uh, looking to ship nationwide. There's a company called Gold Belly. I don't know if you ever saw that. Oh, yeah, company. sure. We're looking to do that. I get my taxes from them. But, you know, it's so funny. I'll tell you a story about that. Back in the summer was my father's birthday, and I had gone to the post office on the way home. I said, Dad, I want to stop by, you know, get you some. He loves bagels and lox and cream cheese. So there's a local place on Long Island we go to. I said, so he said, yeah, but you get me a dozen bagels, some lox, cream cheese, great. I brought it to the house. Sitting on his uh, front porch was a box from Russ and Daughters, but Goldbelly, that my cousin 
had sent him for his birthday. So oh, we, so he beat you to the punch. <laughs> we had two dozen bagels. <laughs> Sal, uh, I, I hate to do this. We have to go, not just because Al's getting hungry. But <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. Can we email food? Wouldn't that be great? I wish we could. I mean, this conversation is making me really hungry, too, to be honest. That's what Zoom should be, emailing food. <laughs> Email food to each other. That would be That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we are short of time. But I, I wanted to give you a chance. I know that a lot of uh, you know famous people, some iconic, legendary, famous people, uh, have come through and, and had dinner at your restaurant. Do you have any stories you can share about you know anyone uh, front – you know, A-list names that we might know. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much. You know, we've been so blessed. You know, the most famous was Frank Sinatra, of course. And we always, when we advertise, we say the restaurant made famous by Frank Sinatra. And uh, I met him the first time I was 13 years old. And uh, my father introduced me to him. And then the, the first time I cooked for him, I was 21. I was upstairs in the kitchen and I was cutting up some onions. And uh, my father was in the dining room. And I was in my, my chef whites. My father was in a suit. And he was sitting down, Frank Sinatra, at his table upstairs. And Frank Sinatra said to my dad, he said, Joe, what are you doing in your suit? You have to put your whites on to cook for me because my father was the chef before me. He said, no, no, my son Sal took over. He says, let me go see him. So I'm minding my own business, cutting up an onion in the kitchen. And it's a door that swings open. I hear the door swing open. I look up. I said, I said hi. <laughs> he says, hey, kid. I says, yes, Mr. Sinatra. He says, make sure you cook as good as your pop does. He was just trying to make me feel good. Uh, one of my favorite stories, uh, I'll make it quick, was uh, in 1977, the Yankees won the World Series. I was 15 years old. I remember old, that. And I was 15 years old. I think I told you the story, Al. And I was 15 years old, and Billy Martin was the manager of the Yankees. I'm sure you're familiar who he was. And he called up my father. He said, Joe, I want a reservation for 50 people, a whole Yankee team. We want to celebrate won the World Series at Patsy's Restaurant. Sure, no problem. Later on that evening, my father greeted them as they came up the stairs. He says to Billy Martin and the Yankees, I have your table set over here. And upstairs, there's a section you could see that the curtain gets closed off. And it's the front, like third of the, of the restaurant where the upstairs windows are. And Billy Martin was starting to sit down with the Yankees. He says to my father, Joe, we always sit back there. He's pointing to where the curtain was. And my father made a mistake. He never was like this, but he said, oh, I've got that saved for someone really important. So, you know, you don't, you don't say that to anyone, especially Billy Martin. So Billy Martin started cursing at my dad. It goes on for about 10 minutes. We get the signal Sinatra was coming. Uh, he, Frank Sinatra had a separate entrance. We'd let him in. and there's The a side, door, right? On the side. You know, Al, you've been there. And it's a side entrance. And he'd come in the door, and it would lead to the upstairs dining room, and he'd go behind the curtain. So Billy Martin must have saw that someone was coming in. He saw the curtain opening, the door opening. He's in his mind, he said, I got to see who's more important than him. So Frank Sinatra's coming up the steps. Billy Martin is about to come down. My father said, hey, Frank, the Yanks are here. And Sinatra said, yeah, the British are coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what had happened, I didn't realize it. The Yankees had just beaten the Dodgers. And Frank Sinatra, while he loved New York, he was a Dodger fan who, you know, Tommy Lasorda, sadly just passed away, was good friends with. And... This part, this whole story is in my first cookbook, but this part is not in there. Frank sees Billy Martin. They come face to face, and Frank says, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and Billy Martin, first time in his life, he got tongue-tied. He's, ah. <laughs> Sinatra got mad, walked past, and went back. Billy Martin came over to my father. Instead of cursing at him, now he says, please, I want to meet Frank Sinatra. I got to meet Frank Sinatra. My father said, okay, Billy, you come with me, just you. I'll introduce you to Frank. <laughs> He started to bring Billy back behind the curtain to introduce him to Frank Sinatra. What my father didn't see was Billy Martin jumped up on a table, said to the team, come on, guys, we're going to meet Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Long story short, took him an hour. Sinatra was so nice. They were thrilled to meet him. He congratulated him on the World Series. Great time. They go back. They finish dinner two hours later. They, Sinatra's about to leave. He gets up. He waves goodbye to the team, and he goes out the door. Billy Martin says, oh, my God to my father, Joe, what a special night. We won the World Series. We ate at Patsy's Restaurant. We met Frank Sinatra. We weren't going to leave until Frank left. Now that Frank left, he says, we can go. Please give me the check. My father hesitated for a second. He said, I can't do that, Billy. Frank picked it up for you. Wow. Put, you know, for the whole Yankee team. So, great wow. story. Great story. Great story. Hey, imagine what he did for the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, you know, he was very famous for doing things that um, – 
anonymous. Very generous guy. Yeah. Anonymously. And, uh, yeah. Under the radar, super generous. Sal, we're out of time. I hate to say goodbye. It's been a great pleasure having you on the show. Before we go, tell people how they can find your pasta sauce, information about your books, your restaurant. Go ahead and plug. Thank you so much. And yes, it's patsies.com without the apostrophe, P A T S Y S.com. All the information is there. If you're on our Facebook, it's Patsy's Italian Restaurant. I do a recipe every Monday. I do recipes there, Instagram as well. And uh, we really appreciate it. If you can support us by buying the cookbook, the sauce, future things, hopefully, if Gold Belly works out. And if you're in Jersey, come see us in Asbury Park as well. That'll be open, God willing, very soon. Unbelievable maybe guest. Boca. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Boca Raton going forward. Al, <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> guest, right, Al? I mean, unbelievable. A- this was great. I yeah. loved it. I am so honored and humbled. I wish you guys uh, the best of health and continued success. You're very good at what you do. I was an honor to be on your show. Well, same thing. Thank to you, Sal. Sal. Thank Absolutely. You. So for Sal Scogna Milo and for Al Martin, <laughs> of course, for our wonderful producer, Jay Frank, I'm Clayton Fletcher. Thank you all so much for listening. <laughs>